Hello, and welcome to the 505 tutorial for screen navigation. This tutorial explains how to access and navigate through the essential screens that are accessed on the front panel of the 505. You will be working with the functions and features of the controller often, so it is important to get a clear understanding of how to access the information you need. The first video in the 505 series, Hardware and Front Panel Overview, introduced you to the design and function of the components and keys located on the front panel of the 505. As you might recall, the navigation cross keys are the primary keys for navigating from screen to screen or for navigating to different objects on the screen. As in most displays, Enter is used for executing actions. Home is used to navigate back to the main screen. If you are within a configuration or service screen, Pressing Home will first take you to the respective menu screen. However, pressing Home a second time will take you to the Home or Main screen. Escape allows you to step back one screen to the previously viewed screen. Pressing this key twice will take you back two screens, and so on. The red keys generally perform navigational actions, such as moving the focus or opening a different screen. The green keys generally perform operational actions, such as enabling, disabling, starting, stopping, tuning, or adjusting values. The black keys are function keys that perform the action displayed above them. They can be navigational or operational. Once configured, the 505 boots up to the home screen. The buttons displayed on this main screen vary depending on the functionality you configured for your particular 505. The buttons on the home screen are divided into two categories, Run Operation and Input Output. The Run Operation buttons are located on the top half of the screen. These buttons allow you to access screens pertaining to running and operating the turbine. For example, the Overview screen shows a summary of configured controllers. The input-output buttons are located on the bottom half of the screen. These buttons allow you to access screens that display the status for all available channels for the different types of inputs and outputs. To access any of the run operation or input-output screens from the home screen, you can either use the navigation cross keys to highlight the applicable button, then press Enter. This will navigate you to the selected screen or press the numeric key on the front panel of the unit that corresponds to the number identified on the desired button. Let's examine one of the input screens. Select Analog Inputs to open the Analog Input Summary screen. On this screen, you can see what values are available for each channel. You can also access the two speed input signals from this screen by pressing the black function key below the desired speed signal number. To set up the input-output channels, place the unit into configuration mode and then select and change each channel for the different input-output types. Please note that the Changing User Levels tutorial explains how to change to the Configure User Level, which is required before placing the unit into configuration mode. The Changing Modes and Languages tutorial explains how to place the unit into configuration mode. To return to the home screen from the Analog Input Summary screen, press either Escape or Home. The buttons along the left side of the front panel of the 505 also allow access to different screens. These buttons can be pressed at any time and from any screen to open their respective screens. Each of these screens can be closed by either pressing its respective button again or by pressing Escape. Let's cover each of these buttons. Pressing Tripped View opens the Trip Summary screen. When a trip is detected, it gets latched in the event logic. The trip relay is de-energized. All steam valve demand outputs go to zero, and the tripped LED illuminates red. The cause of the event will be indicated with an event ID, description, and time and date stamp. The list will always place the first trip condition to occur at the top of the list. The most recent trip condition to occur will always be placed at the bottom of the list. Pressing Alarm View opens the Alarm Summary screen. When an alarm is detected, it gets latched in the event logic. The alarm relay is energized 
and the alarm LED illuminates yellow. The cause of the event will be indicated with an event ID, description, and time and date stamp. The list will always place the first alarm condition to occur at the top of the list. The most recent alarm condition to occur will always be placed at the bottom of the list. Pressing Mode opens the User Login and Mode Selection screen. From this screen, you can access and change the available user levels and operating modes. As mentioned earlier, these functions are described in detail in the Changing User Levels and Changing Modes and Languages tutorials. Press Mode, Home, or Escape to return to the home screen. Now we'll show you how to access the Configuration menu and the Service menu screens. To open the Configuration menu from the home screen, press the black function key below Configuration. The Configuration menu contains navigation buttons to all of the features and options of the 505. To select any of these buttons, use the navigation cross keys to highlight the applicable button, then press Enter. To make changes from the configuration menu, you must be logged in at the configure user level and the unit must be placed in configuration mode. As mentioned earlier, these functions are described in detail in the changing user levels and changing modes and languages tutorials. To open the service menu from the home screen, press the black function key below service. The service menu contains navigation buttons to all the service-related parameters and special features of the control. To select any of these buttons, use the navigation cross keys to highlight the applicable button, then press Enter. To make changes from the service menu, you must be logged in at either the service or configure user level, and the unit must be placed in either calibration or configuration mode. The last thing we'll cover in this tutorial is how to access the site information screen which displays your site's name, location, and unit ID. From the home screen, press the black function key below Site Info. To change the value in any of the text boxes, use the navigation cross keys to highlight the applicable box. Press Enter to select the value currently displayed in that box. Use the numeric keypad to enter the new value. To capitalize letters, first press and release the Shift key. Then press, and if applicable, hold the desired number key for the desired letter. Note that because the numeric keys also contain letters, you will have to press and hold a key if the initial character is not the one you need. Holding the key allows the unit to cycle through the available characters for that key. Stop pressing the key to select the desired character. Press Enter to accept the new value. To close this site information pop up window, Press the black function key below Close. Any changes you made are now shown at the top of the home screen. You now have a thorough understanding of how to access and navigate the various screens of the 505 and where to find the information you are looking for. Please be sure to view the other tutorials for more information on what is contained within their corresponding screens.